click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in our previous lecture we have got to know about how have we uh, synthesized some of the alkyl halide or some of the aryl halides as well as we have also uh, did some of the chemical properties that are been exhibited by those. So now it is very essential for us to understand that if this kind of compounds or, uh, or if this kind of substance are being prepared. So now let us see that what kind of uh, uses and what kind of effect that it would create on uh, the human system as well as on the environment. So this is what we are going to talk about that is the uses and the uh, environmental effects of uh, the alkyl halides as well as the aryl halides. So talking about the first one that is we could talk about. So now let us start with the first one that is dichloromethane or it could be also be written as in the form of general formula that is CH2Cl2. So this kind of uh, compound that is being synthesized because of the halogenation of the methane and uh, that is what uh, we have a uh, uh, got to know uh, during the preparation of the alkyl halide also during chlorination process. So this is a compound that we have obtained and what is the use of this kind of compound. So let us talk about the uses of it. So starting with the first point that we are concerned with that is it can be used as solvent. Yes. So dichloromethane is basically used as a solvent and it can uh, and it has the ability to, to dissolve uh, or to uh, basically make soluble most of the organic compounds that has been dissolved in it. So therefore it is used as uh, a solvent also because of its uh, nature. And talking about the next point that is dichloromethane is also used as a paint remover or degreaser. So this is an organic compound that we have uh, known and but this kind of organic compound is used uh, to remove the paints also or it is used as a degreasing agent also so as to remove the oily part also as to remove this kind of uh, that is paint that has been applied on the wall or in on any kind of substance so that's the reason it is used as a paint remover and now move to the next one that is aerosol spray propellant so this are the uh, certain kind of uses that we have uh, discussed about the dichloromethane but uh, there are also certain kind of uh, the effects that it would uh, create on us or it would create on the environment so let us talk about the effects of the dichloromethane so now let us understand what is the effect of the dichloromethane so there are a few points that I am going to discuss about that is talking about the first point that is when direct use that is Direct contact on the skin, it will generate burning sensation. So that kind of basically uh, the hazardous effect it can create on the human body. And talking about the next thing that is, if in, if it came in contact with the eye, it can cause basically visual impairment, and also it could cause the hearing impairment. So these are the basically the effect and the uses of the first compound that we have discussed about, that is dichloromethane. And now let us move on to the next one. So talking about the uses of chloroform first, so the thing that we know uh, that is chloroform was being used as an anesthetic in, uh, uh, in our previous generation but uh, now nowadays it is not being used and uh, as, in, as in an anesthetic but uh, there are also certain kind of use that we are going to talk about so let us talk about the first one that is So chloroform is used as basically uh, a solvent uh, in the pharmaceutical industries as well as the dye industries because these are the organic compounds they are basically a polar in nature that's the reason that uh, most uh, of uh, the organic compounds that could be easily uh, soluble in this kind of uh, that is 
solvents or when they are acting like a solvent. So therefore chloroform is used as a solvent. As well as chloroform is not only used in pharmaceutical and industries but it could be used as uh, in many uh, industries so as to use as a solvent. So now let us move on to the next one that is And second is it is used to synthesize freons and freons is the one that has been uh, uh, it was been used as or there are also certain kind of compounds in freons that we are going to talk in uh, in this lecture only but uh, let me talk about that is carbon fluorocarbon so this is basically uh, the component that was been used in that is in refrigerator or in uh, air condition so as to give a cooling effect but uh, even the chloroform is been uh, used so as to make such kind of compounds that is freons so these are the uses of the uh, some of the uses of chloroform that I have discussed here, and now let us uh, talk about what are the effect of the chloroform. So let me give the molecular formula of the chloroform, and that has been given as that is CHCl3. So as I have said earlier, also that is uh, the chloroform was being used as anesthetic uh, in. Uh, uh, in early days, but uh, nowadays it is uh, the ether that has been replaced the uh, chloroform. But the reason why that is the the anesthetic it was when the chloroform was used as anesthetic, it could cause some kind of uh, uh, effect on the human body, and that effect was adversely. And that's the reason that we are not using chloroform. And there are also certain kind of uh, uh, basically uh, other kind of effects that it would create. So let me discuss about that also. The thing is. So talking about the first one that is uh, the chloroform are used uh, are basically are placed in a dark container. The reason behind that is because whenever they are being exposed uh, in uh, in presence of sunlight, so that kind of uh, chloroform basically it will produce phosgene and that kind of phosgene is very much hazardous. So that's the reason we could say. So the first effect that we are going to talk about is basically it can form phosgene if not placed in the dark amber colored container due to which uh, the in exposure of sunlight what happens is phosgene is being created and that phosgene is basically hazardous for the human body and that's the reason that we have to take certain kind of precautions while uh, containing the chloroform and that is the reason that in movies also you may have been uh, seeing that uh, those kind of chloroform are kept in an amber colored that is container or in an amber colored glass so now let us talk about the next one that is and the next one is that is it can cause that is headache fatigue and this kind of uh, uh, the problems that could be created if we are uh, more exposed towards the chloroform and that's the reason it could affect the central nervous system also. So that's the reason chloroform which was used as an anesthetic is not now being used because of certain kind of problems that we have got to know over here. And that's the reason that uh, ether has been replaced with the uh, chloroform in the form of uh, the anesthetic. So that's it. This was the thing that I was talking about and now let us move on to the next one. So now let us move on to the next one that is due uh, uh, to the discussion of uses of carbon tetrachloride and the molecular formula could be written as that is CCL4 or uh, this is, could also be called as that is tetrachloromethane. So the uses are as we have discussed earlier also that is most of this uh, uh, alkaloids are basically used as solvent in pharmaceutical industries and talking about the next one that is it can be used as a dry cleaning agent also and the next thing this carbon tetrachloride is used for the preparation of some kind of pesticides. So, we could say that is it is used in so therefore it is also used in the formation of the pesticide. So this were the certain uses of carbon tetrachloride that is what we have discussed over here and uh, talking about the next thing is that is uh, even this are being used as refrigerant also because most of the uh, that is uh, Alkyl halides, since they consist of uh, most of the uh, alkyl halides, basically it consists of basically chlorine atoms. That is what we have discussed in this uh, uh, 
uses at the effect of the aldehyde so basically they are used as a refrigerant also so in the previous one also we have got to know that is they are used as refrigerant like that is freons even they are used as refrigerant so now let us discuss about the effects of this carbon tetrachloride So the effect of CCL4 are as follows that is it can cause eye irritation, headache, vomiting and cause permanent damage to the nervous cell. So this indicates that such kind of hazardous effect that is uh, on the human body if we have not used this very wisely. So this was a certain kind of uses and uh, so for uses because it is used in pharmaceutical industry so that is a good thing that we uh, make it from uh, that is CCL4. But during this kind of direct contact with the human body so that would obviously that would adversely effect on the human body so that's the reason certain kind of precautions uh, is been required so as to handle this kind of chemicals and so this is what i was talking about and now let us move on to the next one that is So now let us discuss about the uses of freons. So what are freons actually? So freons are basically uh, are the compounds which consist of carbon, fluorine as well as the chlorine atom. So they are basically classified and they are of different types and that is what I am going to talk about. That is the first one is if I would say that is CCL2F2. So therefore this is nothing but that is dichlorodifluoromethane. So this is also comes under basically uh, the freons. So now let us talk about the next one that is CCL3F. Even this is uh, the one that comes under the classification of freons that is we could name it as trichloro, we could name it as that is trichloro, fluoro that is methane and the last one that I would like to talk about. So there are various things but uh, for a while let me discuss about that is CH. That is CHCLF2. So, therefore, the name of this one would be because according to IPC name, uh, alphabetical order is also a very uh, concerned thing. So, therefore, we could name this as or this kind of freon as basically chlorodifluoromethane. So, therefore, this all undergoes the uh, in freons. So, now let us discuss about what are the uses of freons. So, this is the main thing that we have to talk about. So, freons are basically used as the uh, refrigerants also because as we have discussed earlier also that is they are used as the refrigerant and they are used in air condition so as to give a cooling effect and so this was the main uh, main use of this freons and talking about the next thing that is it can be used as so it can be used as solvent in cosmetics and the second one that is most of all uh, because uh, we, we are only concerned with the certain kind of uh, the uses of freons so therefore it is also used uh, in making fire extinguishers so therefore these are the certain uses of the freons that we have discussed over here and again talking about the, the effects of the freons obviously uh, the cfc that uh, the carbon uh, fluorocarbon that was being used so that was that is now being uh, banned because it produces an uh, adverse effect on the environment so therefore that kind of freon is not being used nowadays but uh, but instead of that we can use certain kind of uh, freons that could be very much uh, uh, helpful uh, and without any effect on the environment or without having an effect on the human body so that are the uses of the freons. So now let us talk about the next one that is So talking about the uses of DDT, even this DDT is basically an aryl halide. So in the, in the main topic of us was the uses of alkyl halide as well as aryl halide. So this is the aryl halide that we are going to discuss about. So talking about DDT, what does DDT means? So DDT means that is dichloro, diphenyl trichloroethane so therefore the structure of this is very much easy to understand that is uh, we could draw the structure for this one as so 
So basically, this is basically ethane, and on this side, that is basically trichloro. So, therefore, and this is also a phenyl group that is been attached over here, and here also there is a phenyl group that would be attached over here. So therefore the name is basically dichloro diphenyl trichloro ethane. So this is the structure of the DDD. And uh, now let us discuss about the uses of DDD and uh, talking about the first use basically. Uh, this DDD is basically is used as an insecticide and that's an insecticide basically it kills basically uh, mosquitoes. So that's the reason it has a very good effect that it won't cause by usage of this kind of DDD it won't cause basically the malaria that could spread uh, in our society. So therefore this we could say that this uh, DDD is used as insecticide. And also it has very specific effect uh, on the mosquitoes or the house flies only. So it won't affect most of uh, uh, the other uh, that is other living species so that's the reason we can call it as it is very highly specific in its toxicity so this is what we have discussed over here and now let us talk about the effect of uh, the DDT so we know that uh, DDT is used as an insecticide so as to uh, a repellent for the mosquitoes or a repellent for the house flies and these are also used uh, in fertilizers also so basically uh, in fields where we can find that uh, in uh, that is the field of sugarcane and most of the house flies or most of the other insects that could affect uh, those kind of cultivation of the sugarcane so that kind of DDT is basically used in that case but the thing is this uh, compound is basically not biodegradable so whenever we use this kind of insecticide in the farm, basically this deposits on the soil and it doesn't biodegrade. And that's the reason it will remain in the soil as it is and uh, basically it would have an uh, effect on the ecological system also. So therefore it could, and then how somewhere we could be also get affected by this usage. So, so that's it. This was uh, the certain kind of uses and the effect that I was talking about. And uh, thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and uh, you have got to know about some kind of uses and some kind of uh, effects of uh, the alkyl halides as well as aryl halides. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you will share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.